Now that we've become somewhat familiar with solving and graphing um, linear inequalities in one variable, we're going to start looking at compound inequalities. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to graph a compound linear equality in one variable. All right, first of all, let's look at what a compound inequality is. A compound inequality is two inequalities connected by and, or, or. So basically, there are going to be two different situations going on in my situation. All right, the first one, we're going to try to write an inequality, and then we'll actually try to graph it. Actually, I think we'll graph first and then write the inequality. Water is a non-liquid when the temperature is 32 degrees below, or it's at least 212. So what I'm going to be trying to do is list all the temperatures that fit that category. So if it's 32 degrees below, if it's, let's say, if it's 0, if it's 10, if it's 25, if it's 32, all of those would be um, non-liquid because it would be ice at that point in time. And then if it's at least 212, um, 212, 215, 500, anything like that, um, it's going to be steam or vapor. Okay, so now what we want to try to do on a number line again is represent all those answers that would work. So I'm going to start with the 32. And I know that 32 will work because it said it is 32 or below. And then all of these numbers are numbers that are below 32. So that would be that first graph. Or it could be at least 212. So I'm going to put 212 on my number line. I think I'll put 100 in between there just to show where they are in respect to each other. It can be 212 and anything above that. So that would be the graph of that situation. right? If I wanted to try to put what's going on with this in an inequality, if we saw this from doing this before, this is x is less than or equal to 32. So if I had the problem x is less than or equal to 32, that's the way that we would graph it. And then to graph this one, it would be x is greater than or equal to 212. And it can be either one, so I'm going to put the word or in between to say it can be this answer or it can be that answer. So that's what the inequality would look like. All right, second situation, you're driving the speed limit if you're driving at least 45 miles per hour and no more than 70. So basically, I'm trying to think of all the speeds that I could be going. I could be going 45, 50, 52, 68. I could be going 70 and lots of speeds in between. All of those would be acceptable speeds. So to graph that, I'm going to start at 45. I can be going 45, but I can't be going any under that. And I can be going 70, but I can't be going anything more than that. But I can go all the speeds in between. So that's how I would actually graph that inequality. And kind of the keyword here is and. The way that I'm going to represent this one, my value of x has to be somewhere in between 45 and 70. I know that it has to be less than or equal to 70, and I know that it has to be greater than or equal to 45. And notice, although I made a less than or equal to symbol, I was kind of going from the x to the 45. x has to be bigger than 45. So that's the way that we would represent those inequalities. So when I see an inequality that looks like this, the x is in the middle, I know my answer is going to be shaded in the middle. If I see an answer where it's two disconnected parts, I know that my graph is going to be two disconnected parts. So let's try a couple of these problems and see if we can get them. I'm going to put a 3 in this blank. So you'll notice this one, it's connected, which means my graph should be connected. And this just means that my number that I have to pick needs to be somewhere between negative 2 and 3. So I'm going to go ahead and put negative 2 and 3 on my number line. I'm just going to put 0 in the middle of those two to show that that's a number in between those two. Um, at negative 2, if I look at the sign here, there is no equal sign. So I know I'm going to do an open circle because negative 2 is not included in my solution. And then um, the next sign going with the 3, there is an equal sign, which means I do get to include 3 in my answer, and then x has to be a number in between those two. So that is how I'm going to connect that graph. Right? I'm going to let you, let's put a problem up there, let's put a 7 there. I'm going to let you pause the video at this point in time and try this problem and then come back and see how you do. Alright, to work this problem, um, again, x is in the middle of the 4 and the 7. It's a connected graph, so I know that I'm going to connect the problems. I'll put 4 and 7 on it. Um, I can put anything in between those in between it. Alright, at 4, there is an equal sign, so we're going to go ahead and include 4 in our answer. At 7, there is not an equal sign, which means 7 is not included in my answer. And x needs to be somewhere between 4 and 7, so we are going to connect it, and that's what that graph would look like.
All right, let's take a look at number five. X is less than negative two or X is greater than one. Okay, this one, this situation we have or. Either one can be working. It's a disconnected problem, so it's going to be a disconnected graph. So basically, you're just going to graph each of them separately. So I'm going to put negative two over here. One would be over this side. Zero is somewhere in between those two. And now I'm going to actually just graph X is less than negative two. I'm going to use an open circle because there's no equal sign, so I can't include it in my solution. And less than, less than would be all the numbers to the left. And again, if you check your arrows, they match. And then X is greater than one at one again, open circle because we're not including one because there's no equal sign. Greater than would be pointing to the right. Okay, and that's what my graph would look like. Alrighty, number six, let's put an X is greater than three there. Please again, pause the video at this point in time, try the problem and then come back. All right, um, again, we have disconnected situation because of the or, so we'll have two disconnected graphs, so just treat each of them separately. We'll put a zero, we have a three going on, any number in between is fine, I'm just going to put a one there. And then x is less than or equal to zero, there's going to be a closed circle at zero because of the equal sign, less than would be all the numbers to the left of zero. And then x is greater than three, there'll be an open circle because there's no equal sign. And greater than would be all the numbers to the right of three. So hopefully now you can graph a compound inequality.